3890 for review. Um, she actually spoke to Mr. McCluskey, but there are some. Um, landscaper is doing work outside of where he's where he is. Oh, yeah. So it's rather loud. <laughs> this is one where Miss Bennett um, is. She's not an SOC that was entered into in uh, last September, and um, we have been trying to get her into her treatment program. She was um, in one treatment program, and then she left that because it wasn't convenient, and then she left. The new one to go back to the old one, I believe is Navos. Uh, so we we still haven't seen Miss Bennett in compliance with the treatment. So that's what today uh, appears to be about. Have you spoke to any of my counselors or anything, Miss McDonald? Have you spoke to Mr. Mick? I I don't get to speak to your counselors. Got you. Okay. Well, I'm gonna let my attorney talk and then I'll speak when I'm supposed to. Okay, sounds good, Ms. Bennett. Um, anything from Yes, Your Honor. Um, so since uh, last month, um, I know Ms. Bennett was going to restart with Navos July 3rd. Um, I don't have a progress report yet because it's not the end of the month, but I did call the, her treatment provider last night um, and we talked for a bit. Um, she advised me that Ms. Bennett, I believe, has been good with her sober support group meetings. However, she did miss, I believe, four, I want to say, group classes this month so far. Um, and she'll probably list her as in partial compliance. Um, she advised me she spoke to Ms. Bennett um, about the missed classes and was it. It was due to a combination of issues with her Wi-Fi and her phone being broken. Um, and she, she will have to make up those classes that she missed. And that sounds consistent with uh, what Mr. McCluskey learned from Ms. Bennett as well. Okay, I see also uh, there was an email um, that there was a one-on-one -on -one June 23rd and treatment was to start on July 3rd. Yes, Your Honor. So, yeah, I think that was a, a, a new intake, that one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, the new intake, we are um, not quite four weeks in and we right. are missing four sessions. Uh, that's what the provider told me. Uh, she said she'll send me a progress report once the month is over. And she told me the same thing. She said she can't send the progress report to Mr. Mitchell until the end of the month is over, the last day of the month. So, but I have um, been going to my AA meetings, except for those four that I did miss. I also had uh, let her know that she is aware. Um, I was locked out of my iCloud, and that's the reason for me, me when I got my phone screen fixed, that, that's the reason I missed those classes, because I was locked out of my iCloud, except for the one I got kicked out of because I had the kids with me, and Brady, the, the my my AA meeting counselor, he it, for the privacy laws of everybody else, it's just one of those things where I got partial completion for that day, and he had to exit me from the class but I have another class this evening at 6 p.m. as well. But I have been going to my classes except for those classes that I did miss. And I've been trying to keep good contact with Mr. Mitchell. I'm, I message Haley almost every other day and let her know and keep up to date with her about stuff, so.
sounds like we don't quite have a, the complete picture. Um, it seems, Ms. Bennett, that you're kind of on the margins right now. So I'm hoping that you really um, get it together so that the report we receive is that you're in compliance. It's um, This is a difficult situation um, and the court is expecting uh, expecting compliance. Ms. McDonald, I'll hear from you. My inclination is I'll just set this for the August review. Okay. And I understand the, the court's inclination. The city's kind of in a, in a position here. Ms. Ms. Bennett has been dancing around treatment for the better part of 11 months. We are T minus a month and some change away from the end of this SOC. And she has not, for all intents and purposes, even started in treatment. There is no way that she is going to comply with her treatment obligations during the timeline left in this SOC. I have, we have given her chance after chance after chance for starting over with Navos, expecting complete and total 100% compliance late in the game. And here we are, four weeks in, she's missed four sessions. I, I, the city has lost complete faith that she is going to comply with treatment. I don't think that she is a good candidate for probation. And the city is going to renew its motion to revoke the SOC. All right, Mr. Um, Parent. Your Honor, um, we would ask the court not to revoke the SOC, given that she is at least in partial compliance at this time, and that her treatment provider, I believe, um, is um, sounds like they're at least hopeful that that she will be able to maintain compliance from here on out. Well, I think this is something we've been talking about for months that we have. We've been talking about this for months, understood. I'm not understanding why Ms. McDonald's is implying that I haven't started treatment because I have. Yeah. Well, you barely, Ms. Bennett, you barely started treatment. You have until September 6th to complete a program, and you've had so many issues that you cannot, you cannot complete it by the deadline. Okay. So that's my concern is that you have done so many different um, restarting, leaving, making different choices, and you can't finish it in time. When you, but when you work, you take care of children by yourself. I'm sorry. I don't know if you guys have extra hands on deck or whatever the case may be. There's stuff that's happened in my life that's been out of my control, and that's the reason I've been back and forth with treatment. That's the reason I've been back and forth. I had to quit my job to deal with all this. So it's not that I don't want to complete this. I, I want to get it done as much as you guys do, but I just don't understand why it's being made out that I'm not trying. Or like it's, it's, it just seems like you guys want to just put this on me when in reality, you guys know I've been trying the best that I can with the, with the resources that I've been handed, with me having to deal with stuff that I didn't even know and my other probation officer or my attorney, maybe I'm getting my words wrong, him, uh, I think he retired, you guys said, or something like that. So it's just like, it's not necessarily really on me. I can. Be accountable for my actions, but it's like the ones that I can't be accountable for are the actions of everybody else. So Honestly, we may need, we may need to set this for a contested hearing. The city, this is an agreement that you made with the city. You took okay. this obligation to comply with these conditions. This is an agreement you made. You signed a contract. The city is asking um, to revoke because you have not held up your end of the contract. And so we can set this for a revocation hearing and... I'm sorry. Additional information. What exactly is a revocation? So you guys say stuff to me and don't make that clear. So what exactly is a revocation hearing? We can put you back in a breakout room with an attorney to discuss this further. It would be to revoke the agreement. Okay. And the and court would review the documents if it's found that you violated the con the conditions of the agreement, and uh, and a so finding would be entered. 
I have a question as well. Is there a way that I can have the video from September 2021, the police report that you guys said you guys were unable to find and everything? Is there is there any way that I can get all this on record like I've been asking for this whole time? Or would you like me to go to a breakout room for all that as well? Because I was never even presented any evidence or anything like that except for my own admittance of what I did that night. Other than that, I really have been unclear about exactly what is even going on. So you're right. I'm I'm open to doing a revocation hearing, Ms. Grant. Well, the revocation hearing, you've waived your right to present a case. It's in the agreement. So I can have you go into a breakout room with your attorney if you want to discuss it further. But my thought would be that we set this for a revocation hearing. Okay. So what happens at revocation? Hearings. I'll let the attorney speak to you about that. Um, is this something that Mr. McCluskey should assist her with right now, Mr. Parent? We can come back yes, and set I, it I, for I think he'll be able to. And Ms. McDonald, we should think of what date for a hearing. Yep. Any, any time that's a, that's a good fit for the court's calendar. Uh, calendar. Right. So let's let Ms. Bennett have the conversation um, in a breakout room with Mr. McCluskey so you can explain to her um, the SOC and the consequences at this point, what would occur at the hearing. And then we'll come back, Ms. Ms. Bennett. Or if we want to just set it now for a hearing, and then you can take care of that in the end. Yeah. That be All right. Thank you. That'll be best. All right. So let's see. We should probably set this. Um, probably on a Wednesday. In the afternoon or during the morning calendar? I think the morning fine if we can find a find a letter with not an enhanced probation one. August 16th is an interpreter calendar, but it is light set at this point. Or, or August 23rd. August 23rd would probably be better for my schedule so I can make this all work. All right, Ms. Bennett, I will require that you appear in court in person, not, not by Zoom on that day. It will be set for review revocation on August 23rd. That will be at 9 a.m. And we'll note the in-person appearance. Ms. Mr. Mitchell will continue to connect with Ms. Johnson uh, at Navos and, and get updates. Yes, Your Honor. I'll, I'll reach out um, at, after the end of the month and make sure that we get this is a, a progress report. All right. So that will conclude your hearing, Ms. Bennett. If you'd like to, um, is Mr. McCluskey able to speak with her today or do you want to make an appointment, Mr. Bennett? <laughs> Ms. Bennett, if you just want to join that breakout room again, I will meet you in there, okay? All right. Thank you. your last name, sir? Hello. Hi, what's your last name? Uh, Rattery. 
Just let me know when the court's ready. I'm sorry? Just waiting for the court to be ready. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, this is uh, Douglas Rattery, clause number 23 l 9 I'll hear from the defense. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Abby Pence on behalf of Mr. Douglas Rattery, who appears for arraignment. Today, I have reviewed the charge as well as his rights at arraignment. No questions about those at this time. We would stipulate to probable cause for purposes of today's hearing. Request that the court accept a plea of not guilty. We are asking the court for uh, appointment of public defense today. Um, Mr. Rattery currently does work, but his take-home monthly pay is only $1,800 per month, and he supports a total of three people on that limited income. So we would ask the court for appointment of public defense. I will appoint for what law without a promissory note. I'll hear from the city now. Thank you, Your Honor. In reviewing Mr. Rattery's criminal history, it appears he has five cases with warrant history, eight um, convictions, one of those being a felony controlled substance violation from as recent as uh, this May of 2023. Um, it does concern the kids city that four of those convictions are domestic violence. The victim in this case, Julie Wilson, is the victim in three of those four cases. And so um, the city is asking for bail. We are also asking for a no contact order. Um, looking at um, Rattery, just hold tight. Looking at his cases, it looks like warrant history on at least one, two, three, four, five of those uh, cases have warrant history as well. So victim safety, uh, appearance at court, and for all those reasons, um, we are asking that the court consider $5,000 cash or bond. No, 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 no. Mr. Rattery, Mr. Rattery, just hold tight. Let me make my record. Okay. And Your Honor, um, I would ask the court to consider a release for Mr. Rattery. Um, the city just mentioned a conviction from this year. I don't see any criminal convictions for Mr. Rattery since 2003. So it's been 20 years without any criminal convictions whatsoever. Oh. Um, based on his limited history in the last 20 years, I'm asking the court to release him on his own personal recognizance. He has significant ties to the community. Uh, he's worked for the same job for the last 17 years locally on Marine View Drive here in Tacoma as a machine operator. Um, no criminal history whatsoever in the last 20 years. Um, the alleged victim, Julie Wilson, um, is a disabled person. Um, Mr. Rowdery is her full-time caregiver, so I'm asking the court to consider not imposing a no-contact order. Um, he is her only means of transportation and her caregiver. Um, she's suffering from schizophrenia at this time. Um, he is pleading not guilty, denies these allegations at this time, um, and a no contact order is going to not help the situation whatsoever um, when the person who is the alleged victim is fully reliant on Mr. Rowdery for all of her transportation and medical care um, and is, is pretty severely disabled. I'd ask the court to release him. Again, I, the city mentioned a conviction from this year. I see no convictions from this year. Uh, the last conviction I see is from 2003, which was 20 years ago.
And I, I will agree with that. And I apologize to the defendant and to Ms. Pence. I wrote down 2023, but it clearly states 2003. True, so true. the felony is from 2003. Yeah. However, um, Ms. Pence's argument and information that the victim is severely disabled further concerns the city. The fact that he is her one and only transportation and caregiver further concerns the city because right. she is a vulnerable victim to domestic violence. And this is an alleged fourth time that there's been domestic violence in this relationship. Never heard her. Perhaps he should not be her caregiver. Right. And the city is maintaining its request for the no contact order and its request. If he's working full time, he should be able to post bail. It's $500 cash or bond, a um, $5,000, excuse me, cash or bond would be a $500 uh, bail. And then he should be able to set up residence somewhere else or she can set up residence somewhere else. But at this time we're asking that um, he not have any contact with her at the residence that's indicated in the police report. I, I just have another brief response to him being financially able to post bail. $1,800 is still an extremely limited income. He's supporting three people financially on that income. Um, that qualifies him for public defense and makes him an indigent person under the guidelines, and the court must consider that fact. Uh, he's not financially able to post any bond based on that. He's working full-time supporting three people on $1,800 per month. Um, that's significantly below um, the indigency guidelines for the court to consider. Uh, he has no financial ability to post based on that. That income is largely going to expenses um, and the, the financial welfare for three different individuals. Um, I've discussed the no contact order with Mr. Rowdery. While we are encouraging the court not to impose a no contact order, he fully understands how to abide by one. And if the court does impose that, he would be able to um, find another place to live and abide by a no contact order. Our argument today is that's going to further create issues in this, uh, this situation where the alleged victim is extremely disabled, not going to understand the no contact order herself. Um, I was unfortunately unable to reach her this morning. I don't know if the city had actually any contact with her. Um, I wasn't able to make contact and from the information I have. I don't know um, that she would actually request be requesting one or not. Um, so I, I think a no contact order is not going to make this situation any better, but Mr. Rattery fully understands how to abide by one should the court decide that. Um, I don't I don't believe bail is appropriate in this case. Based on his significant ties to the community, he's worked for the same position for 17 years um, and lives in Oakley. All right. Uh, I think I've, you're starting to repeat yourself, so I'm going to just go ahead and make my ruling now. I do um, appreciate um, both the arguments from the defense and the prosecutor. This court is um, concerned about the allegation of strangulation of a vulnerable individual. Oh, was a uh, Yes, I apologize for interrupting the court. I think I was on mute. Um, the city is moving to dismiss. There's two counts filed, and um, the strangulation count was already filed. That's one of the prior domestic violence um, convictions is the strangulation case. And so the city is moving to dismiss that. Somehow that's a refile. So this is a new incident of, of slapping the victim across the face. And so we would move to dismiss the strangulation and just uh, arraign on the one count of uh, assault DV. Okay. I apologize again, Your Honor. Thank you.
Yes. I'm sorry too. I just saw. I only advised Mr. Rattery about one count of assault, fourth degree domestic violence. I wasn't aware there was any other allegations before this court, so that just surprised me to hear that. But I think Ms. Schumacher's addressed that. Okay, and the reason that um, I said that is because that is what's on my calendar. But um, given that information, that uh, what is before this court is assault in the fourth degree. I believe the least restrictive means in this case is to release. However, I am going to institute a no contact order in concern with multiple allegations of domestic violence with this vulnerable victim. I will set an out of custody plea trial. And that will be August 10th at 1 p.m. Does defense know it or are, is defense requesting a civil um, standby so I can fill out the document? We would be requesting a civil standby. The Sir, city, no objection. Sir, I have um, appointed for a walk law. You do have an attorney and their information will be on the paperwork that you get today. Please have no criminal law violations. Update any address changes immediately with the court. Use only your true legal name and date of birth. Want you to abide by the no contact order that I will be issuing today. This court believes that that is the least um, restrictive means to assure safety in this case. Is your honor ordering that the civil standby occur within five days of release? Uh, within a week of release. Thank you. And I will review that now. This no contact order protects Julie Wilson, date of birth 1 17, 1966. Do not cause, attempt, or threaten to cause bodily injury to assault, sexually assault, harass, stalk, or keep under surveillance the protected person. Do not contact the protected person directly, indirectly, in person, or through others by phone, mail, or electronic means, except for mailing or service and process court documents to a third party or contact by the defendant's lawyers. Do not knowingly enter, remain, or come within 1,000 feet of the 146th Street address in Lakewood. Do not obtain, own, possess, or control a firearm. Do not access, having your custody or control, obtain, purchase, receive, attempt to purchase or receive or possess a firearm of the dangerous weapon or concealed pistol license. This no contact order expires July 24th, 2028. Within seven days of release, you are allowed a uh, one-time civil standby to the 146th Street Lakewood address. Mark is served on the tenant and I'm signing. I will sign that as well. Um, if possible, could I please get a brief breakout room with Mr. Rattery?
And I am checking the box, do not possess or own firearm. And I believe everything's signed and we are done with Mr. Rattery. Is that correct, Your Honor? Yes. Okay. You're free to go, Mr. Rattery. Uh, excuse me, Your Honor. Sure. Uh, we have Mr. Uh, Beauvoir or Beauvais, uh, Corn Beauvais. He's unfortunately um, refusing to come to court. He's, he's refusing. Bobay is refusing, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Good morning, sir. What is your name? Cameron Lee Coleman. All right, Mr. Coleman, you've been charged with one count of aggravated assault. Bond for this charge is $30,000. I have a stay away condition for you to stay away from the alleged victim, Miss Stacy Coleman. Your preliminary hearing is going to be August 16th at 8.30 a.m. And in regards to um, your court appointed counsel, you said you work, but you wasn't clear on how much you make per month. Um, yeah, we're still just scaling our business right now. We just started getting like official contacts for performances and we just got our PRO rights in for BMI. So learning, you know, the different establishments that have this versus ASCAP and then learning how to, um, you know, we're just still in the process. So how much, how much would you say you make per month, sir? Just the lowest amount, um, average. The lowest amount, $500. Okay. I'll appoint counsel to represent you, sir. Do you have any questions? Um, so am I, is my bond, is my bail waived or is it just my signature bond since I don't have any priors? It's not a signature bond based on the charge that is on the warrant, sir. I'll give you $30,000. Right. He said, he said $3,000? $30,000, sir. Um, do I pay 10% of it and then I can go home? It depends on your bonding company, sir. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome, sir.
Mr. Burke is here for uh, the, the Bailey Garrison matter. Yeah. I think according to my conversations with um, Ms. Shattuck, the victim on that case was going to be logging in. Oh, and she's here, Ms. Rodriguez. Is that our next matter that we're doing? We certainly can address that, yes. Okay. Uh, Nichols Bailey Garrison. Oh, Nicholas. Oh, Nicholas. Um, and the case number is 3A0524259. That's the matter we had on for pretrial on Monday. We also have an arraignment set. 3A0535817. Council, your appearance for the record. Good morning, Your Honor. For the record, Dustin Burke appearing uh, on Zoom for Mr. Bailey Garrison, who's present in the courtroom. And this was one, Your Honor, where the city had charged the defendant with one count of assault in the fourth degree, domestic violence, and one count of harassment, domestic violence, stemming from an incident occurring on July 3rd, on July 5th, when he was released from custody uh, after posting uh, bail or bond, uh, there's an allegation that the defendant left the jail and went directly to the alleged victim's residence in violation of the court order that he was served with at the time of his um, court appearance on the originating charge. And so city has filed those charges and we have made a motion to revoke his uh, release and increased bail, which the court did increase to $50,000 based upon the allegations. Uh, I believe Ms. Shattuck was present on uh, Monday and did address some of those uh, issues. And so we are back before the court with now the defendant uh, present to address them and to do arraignment at the very least on the new charge. And I do believe I did see emails go across the chain that did uh, Madam Clerk did provide Mr. Burke with a copy of the no contact order. The city did provide Mr. Burke with a copy of the probable cause statements for both uh, of the matters. I did instruct him to get into contact with my paralegal uh, to follow up on the discovery issues as I did not see that uh, we had received his notice of appearance at the time of the last hearing. And Your Honor, we did we did um, speak to uh, the city staff, and, and they did have copies of our notice of appearances. Um, we did receive discovery on the new case. We do not have it yet on the assault um, slash harassment case, um, but I I think I have enough to go forward today. Uh, we also did get a copy of the no contact order from this from the uh, court, uh, which helps me, uh, which is going to be something that I'm going to be using today to argue against probable cause on the new case. Um, and so I guess whatever order the court wants to take this in, I also do know that the alleged victim is present. Um, I don't know if the court, I think that she wants to address the court is my understanding, um, in regards to where she is living, uh, and then also when she started living there, which may help the court, excuse me, help the court as well in making a decision today on probable cause slash alleged violations. All right, well, let's begin. I have a copy of the complaint um, to provide to Mr. Bailey Garrison. Um, I don't know what it, this was sent here, so I'm going to give that to you, Mr. Bailey Garrison, and we'll proceed to arraignment on the case ending in 817. Let's see. And then one other housekeeping matter, Your Honor, we did email the court this morning and also CC counsel. Um, his mother is present in court today and, and, and wanted to write a statement uh, to the court. So uh, just, I don't know if the courts had a chance to review that. We got it yesterday evening and sent it over this morning as soon as we could. Uh, his mother's name is Aisha Newchurch. And again, she's present in court today as well. And was that provided to Ms. McDonald? It was. Yes, I did receive it. It's um, I have not had a chance to read it as it's fairly lengthy. Yeah, I just am seeing it now in my file. Um, 
All right, so let's uh, proceed with the arraignment. Uh, sir, is your turn correct name Nicholas Bailey Garrison? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And your date of birth is 119-1994? Yes, Your Honor. And what is a good address for you at this time? Um, the best address uh, is the 1924 28th Avenue. All right, so that it's not the apartment. What is your question? What is the address that you're using? I have it. I'm looking at a different address here. My residential address is 19421 28th Avenue, apartment letter C, out of Lake Forest Park, 98155. Okay. All right. And Ms. McDonald, I'm going to have you proceed to formal arraignment. And he has been provided with the complaint that your office filed with the court. Get to the right one, seven. All right, your true and correct name, uh, Nicholas Bailey Garrison. And I have your date of birth here is January 19, 1994. The last address I have for you is 19421 28th Avenue Northeast Department C in Lake Forest Park. Is that correct? That's correct. At this time, sir, you're being charged with one count of violation of a no contact order allegedly to have occurred within the city of Lake Forest Park. Uh, on or about the fifth day of July, 2023. Do you understand what it is that you're being charged with? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, yes. Do you understand that this is a crime that is punishable by up to a year in jail and $5,000 in fines? Yes, I understand. And do you understand that you have a right to an attorney as well as a right to a jury trial? Yes. And what is your plea to the offense? I'll enter a not guilty plea on your behalf. Pulling up the full report here, Your Honor. And it looks like we do have Ms. Shattuck, who has just joined us on this case. I did reach out to her. Okay. And I did review on Monday um, officers, the voters, uh, probable cause statement in this case. And of concern to the city runner is the address of the defendant confirmed is the address of the alleged violation um, where the alleged victim uh, resides as well. In your honor, we don't believe that that's correct. The, the alleged victim is here and, and, and can provide her address, but my understanding is that she's never been on this lease. She's not, she has not been residing there since the first incident date on July 3rd. Um, so I, I guess I would ask the court to ask the alleged victim if what her actual residential address is. Where is she, where is she residing? According to the report, Your Honor, it's, lo it's um, noted as uh, that is where she resides. And that's that's great, but she's here, and I think she can she can provide us that information. I don't know either, but I'd like to hear from her. Well, I believe that when we were in court uh, for the arraignment on the original case, we had conversations about uh, the fact that she was at that apartment and you were not going to be at the apartment. We had conversations about you making arrangements um, to see your children. Uh, I don't believe there was any ambiguity at that time that you were not to be around her and there was no ambiguity that you would be going back to that address. 
um, Mr. Bailey Garrison. Mm -hmm. So I can hear from her, but it was my understanding that that's where she was staying with you. I thought we had this conversation on the record. In, in your honor, it's my understanding that after being, his mother picked him up from, from jail um, and, and he, his uncle lives with him. That's in the police report, lived with both of them. And it's my understanding that the alleged victim contacted his family, letting them know uh, that she would not be residing there any longer. So that, that information was passed to him after he left jail. And again, she's present, so I think we could hear from her as to when she, where her residence is and when she left that residence, if that's, if that's the case. Uh, Ms. Shattuck or Ms. McDonald, have you spoken about this issue? I will defer to Ms. Shattuck, Your Honor, because she has had primarily most of the contact with the alleged victim. Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, Nancy Shattuck, victim advocate. Um, I have spoken with um, the alleged victim multiple times, and this morning we were discussing uh, what her residence is, and it sounds like at this point she doesn't plan on returning to the residence. That was not the conversation we had previously had. Uh, we had previously talked about that she was potentially going to return back there. I don't know if she wants to share or if the prosecutor wants her to share. Well, at, at this point, here, here's the city's position. That is where the alleged victim was residing at the time of the initial incident. That's where the alleged victim was still residing at the time of the alleged order violation. Whether or not she decides to return to that particular residence at the, in the meantime, out of the result of fear of the defendant or, or safety concerns, or maybe it's part of her safety plan, which obviously we don't want um, to uh, put out on the, on the airways, so to speak. Regardless of, the fact of the matter is, is the defendant was charged with an assault and a harassment out of this court. He was required to stay away from her as well as the residence where she was staying. At the time of the initial um, incident, that was her residence. That is where she's staying. That is what is listed in the police report as her address of record. The defendant is in violation of the court's orders. Now, the defendant, my understanding is the defendant has been seen at that residence still maintaining uh, his location there in the meantime. The, um, it's, it's very plausible that the alleged victim is going to be fearful to return to that place. That may still be her residence. She may not go back there for the meantime out of fear but that does not negate that as her residence. I will tell the court right now, I just pulled up her abstract of driving record. That is a, as, uh, her residence address on file with Department of Licensing as well. So that's that's further evidence that um, she does reside there. So I, I don't believe that the defendant should be allowed to return to that residence. I believe that she should be allowed to return there um, with some semblance of safety. And uh, city is going to be asking that the court serve that $50,000 warrant for violation of the conditions of release from that initial uh, case and set bail in this new order violation matter. We can even set it at 5,000, Your Honor, because we anticipate he'd be held on the uh, primary case as well so that he's able to um, uh, start garnering uh, credit for time served on on all matters. But th this is a significant violation given the allegations and the cases. And uh, we believe that his release should be revoked. May, may I speak for my own behalf? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna speak on your behalf, Mr. Bailey Garrison, and then, and then you can talk if you'd like to. Thank you. And, and your honor, we, we would, I don't believe, I think that it's very relevant what, what her residence is. And she is present today. I, I, I don't know why the city is kind of trying to keep her from speaking, but if her residence, if she passed on information to my client's family that her residence was going to be changing, and she is not on the lease, and he is, and she was not going to be present when he got out of jail and returned to that house, I don't believe that there is a violation of the no contact order. The, the no contact order that was signed by your honor indicates residence. It, it does not 
indicate an address. And so if we, if he has information that her residence has changed, uh, my understanding is that she's living in federal way with family, then that is not a violation of the, of the no contact order to return to his residence, which is the residence that he's on the lease for. So, you know, this is being painted as him going back there to get retaliation or something against her for filing this case and that she's scared of him. Well, she's present today and, and let's hear from her if she's in fact scared of him and whether she um, believes that he was there to, you know, to harm her. That's his residence, Your Honor. That's why he was present there and she was not going to be there. So I don't believe there's been any allegation that he's communicated with her, texted her, called her, was at the house when she was there. And now the city is asking to basically keep him in custody for the next couple of months while we await a trial date on this case, when he is more than willing to abide by a no contact order, a no contact order that has her living in a different county. Um, Your Honor, he, he is employed, he, he owns his own business, um, obviously has children with the alleged victim that he still is hoping to have a family court sort out and see. Um, he does not have a, a criminal record of domestic violence. I know that there has been a case, I believe, charred, but that was dismissed. It did not involve the alleged victim in this case. Um, he has family ties. He's there with his mother today, who again wrote that letter. I don't believe the court has sufficient a sufficient reason or, or cause for concern to put Mr. Bailey Garrison away on, a, on an amount of bail that he cannot post. Um, he has every intention of complying with the no contact order. I think that there was a misunderstanding perhaps about the residence. I'm not saying that I was not present for that hearing. I'm not saying that your honor, you know, misspoke or anything like that, but I believe that at the time he did believe that she was going to be residing there and got additional information. Again, his mother picked him up from jail that she was not going to be living there and was not going to be returning. And that is why he returned to his house, but it was not a willful violation to go and threaten her or harass her or disturb her. That was not the plan. Mr. Bailey Garrison is well aware of the charges and the seriousness of this case and it has no interest in violating the order. Um, so to put him in custody hampers our ability to defend his original case and we ask your honor to leave him out on the five or the three thousand dollars bail that he posted <clears throat> and to not I, I'm asking the court to not find probable cause for the new case. So, so to not set any bail on that, but if the court finds probable cause to PR him with a clear understanding today that he will not be in contact with her and hopefully we can settle this residence issue so that he is aware whether, whether he's able to go back there or not. Again, we have Ms. Rodriguez here on the call that can tell us what her address is going forward and whether she wants him to be removed from that property. It sounds to me, I spoke to her yesterday and it sounded to me like she was, that she was not going to be returning and did not care if he was living there. So again, that's, that's what I would like to hear from her today if, if your honor is willing to, but that's, that's our, that's our uh, position in this case, your honor. And Mr. Bailey Garrison is taking this matter very seriously. I mean, his, his business is on the line here essentially as well. He owns his own moving business. He's the he's the owner. He's the um, he has one employee, and um, if he's in custody, his whole life is basically taken away from him because he has he has jobs lined up next week. So um, I'm happy to answer any further questions, Your Honor. But in, in Mr. Bailey Garrison, if you want to add something to that, you can. I don't want you to speak about the facts of the case. Um, I also have a few jobs that I booked this week. Uh, that I would love to attest to. Um, I have been the sole provider of the residence itself. Uh, so if I myself cannot pay the bills, then uh, a lot, a lot more negative things will happen behind that. Um, I also do have animals at the home that need to be properly taken care of. Um, yeah, that's really all I can put in right now. My thought on this, Mr. Burke, Mr. Bailey Garrison, is that when you were in court on July 5th, I entered a no contact order. You made it very clear that you did have children, you did have a business. I put lower bail 
than the city was asking in that matter, although I was concerned about the allegations in the police report. My concern is that you were released that day and you went to the apartment. I don't know at that time what your information was. Are you asking a question? No, I, it may, what I'm trying to say is it may be that she decides she's going to live somewhere else. But at that point in time, the address we had and the address that apparently is in, in DOL for Ms. Rodriguez is that apartment. That's where she was living at the time. Whether you're on the lease or you're paying the bills, she's residing there with you, with your children. It was very clear that that's what the situation was at the time. So going back to that residence, when you were told you could have a civil standby, at some point in time, there might be a break where there could be, she's moved out, she's gone, you can resume. But we're talking immediately after being released from custody, you go back to that residence. And there was information, I don't know if Ms. McDonald or Ms. Shattuck can attest to it, but there was information about tampering with a video surveillance of you going to the residence, which would indicate that you knew you weren't supposed to be at that residence. That's a concern for me. And the allegations in the original report were very concerning. So if there is further indication that you knew you weren't supposed to be there and you're altering the monitoring, that completely goes to your consciousness of guilt of what you were doing at that. Your Honor, if I could just interrupt just briefly, just she he had he had heard that she was moving out and she had access to that video. So it was more of just a separation piece to not have her watching him. Well, you know, it wasn't that she that he was trying to damage anything or it was it's his video equipment, is my understanding, and it's and it's his right to take it down. Objection is to counsel's testifying, Your Honor. You certainly can't account for the defendant's state of mind. They both live there. They both had access to the equipment. They both had equal rights to that. This is not a civil issue. This is a defense culpability issue. And it's really, for me, it's a safety concern in that I issued an order and and whether or not you violated the conditions of your release that were put in place on the 5th. That's the concern that I have, is that you were very clearly advised that you were not to be returning to her residence, and yet you immediately go back. So may I speak upon what's going on? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, I return to attest to my animals. After that, I was gone for the night and I was not back. I was gone. Yes, I did tamper with the cameras. They're my cameras as, as being said before, and I did not have access to them. I did not. Um, you can actually talk through the, the cameras themselves from, tele, from the telephone. And again, I did not have access to it. Um, I believe Mr. Burke was actually on point with saying I did not want her essentially seeing what was going on and as I'm trying to get myself together so I can get out of there. Um, I needed my files, all my court information, just like my business information. I needed clothes. I needed things that I needed for myself to take care of myself since I was not going to be at And I understand that, Mr. Bailey Garrison, and that's why the court authorized a civil standby. That's the proper method to go into that home and get your belongings. It's called a civil standby. It was authorized in that order so you could do your things. I wanted you to be able to continue your business. I wanted you to be able to continue to have a relationship with your children. I was trying to be very fair to you, setting bail at an appropriate amount that you could post, that you could go back to your life but also protecting Ms. Rodriguez. That was my concern. And so when you know that you're going there to get your things to get out of there, you know you're not supposed to be there. It's understandable, Your Honor. Though I did have note that she was not 
present at the address at the time. So I did not believe that it was necessary to have Lake Forest Park come out for a civil standby if she was not at the residence at the time that I had well, went. That was ill-advised of you to do that. You were told you could have a civil standby whether she was in that house or not. That's that's what the civil, she doesn't have to be there. That's not why you're getting the police. You're not allowed to be in that residence whether her presence is there or not. Okay, so that, I do find that you violated the conditions of the release. I have not had a chance to read in great detail the statement that was made by your mom. But I understand the gist of this. You have a lot of responsibility on you, that you take care of other people, that you have a business. I get all of that. I understand that. But I also understand that we have a victim that the court is concerned about protecting. And if she's going somewhere else and that's been arranged and Ms. Shattuck can speak to her and she's no longer residing there and she has all her things out of that residence, then you could probably go back to that residence. But we're talking about a point in time when it was not okay for you to be there. Okay? So I am finding that you violated the conditions of your release in the case ending in 259. I do find probable cause for the charge. You provided a letter, and so I have the information. That would be great if you could read it, because at the bottom, I understand you say you didn't read it in detail, but it would be great if you would read it. And the only reason I'm saying that is because I understand the position of the court is to protect its citizens, right? But at the same time, the court's responsibility is to protect all of its citizens, okay? You're allowing a situation where my son maintains, has maintained his residence for the last seven years. So putting him in a position where the alleged victim is allowed to remain there without a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of or a means to obtain said pot. Okay, I have your written statement. I, has, I don't want you to speak anymore. She that is very, no, no, you need to stop. I will have you leave. For that apartment. I'm going to ask you to step out of the courtroom. I'm not stepping out of the courtroom. I would like for you to read the letter. That's what I would like. I'm going to have you step out of the courtroom if you're going to be inappropriate. I'm going to allow you to finish. You go right ahead. You're also inappropriate. Let me just say that. Okay. I'm going to have. Ma'am, I'm going to have to find you in contempt if you do not step out of this courtroom. I'm not in contempt. I'm just asking you to understand, like. I will read your written statement. That's afforded to my son as well. He has an attorney present. Ms. Mr. Ms. Burke, Ms. You Ms. might Ms. want Ms. to get a handle on this. I will. I will. Miss Ms. Newchurch. Miss Newchurch. Miss Newchurch, you're not helping at this point, okay? The judge. I will the judge. Stop. Okay. The judge will the judge will read with judge his his will read your letter if if, if that's okay with your honor. But I don't I, need you to make I any will definitely read this letter. I am not trying to be unfair to Mr. Bailey Garrison. I have concerns and these were addressed and I will read this letter. But I will not have Miss Newchurch acting like that in court. Understood. Miss Newchurch, please keep it down, okay? Yeah, I will. Ms. McDonald, I'll allow you to take a moment, too, to read the letter since we did just get it today. So please take I, a moment. I, I, I've read it while um, the court was uh, interacting with the defense. Um, does it appear to be any kind of um, fact-based fact uh, testimony? It's more along the lines of character and the responsibilities defendant has.
All right, I have reviewed the letter. All right, let's start. Uh, Ms. Ms. Shattuck, do you believe that Ms. Rodriguez has vacated the residence and is no longer going to be living there? Yes, I'm unclear if she has all of her belongings out of the residence though, so I don't know. And I know that normally a civil standby is authorized for the defendant, but if I would ask if she does have anything left in the residence, if she could be authorized a civil standby to be able to go back. She doesn't need a civil standby at this point. She's able to retrieve her belongings, but I'll hear from Ms. Rodriguez. Ms. Rodriguez, if you could activate your audio and video, please. Thank you. All right, I'd like you to just state your name. My name is Siomi Rodriguez. Okay. And Ms. Rodriguez, I'm going to have you raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give today is uh, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. All right. Are you residing at that apartment, the 19421 28th Avenue Northeast apartment? No, I'm not. Okay. And have you been able to get all your belongings out of that apartment? Um, yes, I have most of my belongings. The other stuff I don't really care for. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. And when did you vacate the apartment? I vacated the apartment the night of the incident, and I have been gone since the night of the incident. Okay. And you've had a chance to meet with uh, Ms. Shattuck and safety plan? No. Have you had conversations with Ms. Ms. Shattuck about what you can do to maintain your own safety? Yes. Okay. And so Ms. McDonald, do you have any questions for her? I don't have any questions, Your Honor, certainly, but I want to... Uh necessarily put on the on the record. I think that, you know, Ms. Shattuck and I will probably have further conversations with Ms. Rodriguez, what, whether or not she's staying in that residence, like the court pointed out earlier, is of, you know, neither here nor there. That is her address of record. So that's true. Um, yes. And so and, and I understand that. And if she chooses to stay somewhere else for her own perceived safety, 100%, that is, I, I am supportive of that because that is, you know, part part of her making sure that she herself and her children are safe. Um, but uh, yeah, and in terms of today's hearing, uh, I, I don't think there's anything necessary that I need to speak to Ms. Rodriguez on the record about. It's primarily um, how, how we're going to proceed with the defendant's Situation. Absolutely. I think going forward, if Mr. Um, Bailey Garrison is able to post bail, whether or not he could go back to the residence was the purpose in my asking those questions. Certainly. Certainly. And Your Honor, it, it doesn't sound, it, it, and as far as I can see on um, her abstract of driving record, her DOL address of record is still that residence. Um, that is, for all intents and purposes, still her address of record, her residence of record. If she's staying somewhere else in the meantime, that, that's fine, but um, there, there's going to have to be a delineation of it, if she's, it, if she wants to go back and is just too fearful to go back, that, that's one thing. If she has physically moved out and um, overtaken her own lease or is, you know, formally changing her address with someone else, that that's fine. We'll need to parse that out so that we can uh, amend the no contact order to include that new address that she is at that he cannot have access to. Um, My concern is that we have protection for her, whether she wants him to know where she's living. Correct. That that is something to be considered. And if yeah. she wants to keep a private residence, that could be very important. The no contact order is written in a way and that it's whatever school she's at, whatever residence she's at, he's to have no contact. Mm -hmm. But at this point in time, I'm not clear that Ms. Rodriguez would be safe with that address being disclosed. I would agree. So, so your, your Honor, so we're using it, 
the residence is her BOL address, and that's the that's the address the court is going to be using. It just seems like if this was Mr. Reversed. Burke, I think the issue was whether or not she lived in that place, whether her belongings were there, did she sleep there, had she been there for an extended period of time, or her children? Exactly. exactly. So the DOL that's living, address, that's the DOL address is not relevant. It, it's where she's living. Because if she, had an updated her, if she had an updated her DOL address, we wouldn't be using an old address just because that's on the DOL address. But what's it's just further evidence. You're trying to say because she wasn't on the lease, that means she wasn't living there. I think there are many people that no, I'm not saying I'm not saying that, that at all. On a I'm, lease. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying the opposite of that. I'm well, saying you made the we're, we're, argument we're, earlier that she was not on the lease. He was on the lease and not her. Well, the, the, the residents. So are, are we saying that this is still her residence then even though she's not residing there? because that's her DOL address. I'm saying that that was her residence at the time of the event. And what I'm trying to say going forward, if she is vacating and has no intention of being there and her belongings are gone, then there is a delineation. But we already have Mr. Bailey Garrison's admissions that he knew he wasn't to be there. He was going to get his things and get out of there. He said on the record he needed to get his files, he needed to get some clothes, and he thought it was okay because she wasn't there at the time. But he understood he wasn't to be there. So that's what we have on the record today from his statements. He never said that he wasn't allowed to be there, Your Honor. He, that's not that's not part of his testimony today. So um, I disagree. Um, she's present. I mean, can we ask her? Are you are you afraid of Ms. Mr. Bailey Garrison? Objection, Your Honor. So, why, so, she, the, so the city can ask questions, and I the city can ask questions, and I can't. No, at this point, the alleged victim you, is not. Are no. you are you the making the decisions, Ms. McDonald, or is the judge? I'm saying it's not appropriate. Okay, let's stop this. This is inappropriate. Let's just stop for a moment. We're trying to de determine whether or not she was going to be there. So if he's able to post bail, it sounds like she is out of that residence. I will determine right now that she's not going back there. She has said that if you are able to post bail, you can go back to that residence. She is now gone. I do believe that you stated very clearly on the record that when you went back, you were there to retrieve your belongings and you didn't think she was going to be there at the time. It's my understanding that you, from your statements, understood you were not to be there and you didn't think the civil standby was necessary. But you were Our, not staying my there. Client, my client's not going to be answering any further questions. That's of, fine. Right? That but is for my I, what, what, are, what, what we had said was that we did not believe that she was residing there any longer. That's why he returned to the residence. So this is not his trial, but that's what no, we said. No, it is not. This is whether or not he's violated the conditions of his release. But but that's the reason why is that he is that he did not believe that she was living there based on what she provided to his family. That's what I clearly said. So I, he does not need to answer any further questions about it. That's why that is our argument that she was not residing there on July 5th. The incident was July 3rd. There were two days in, in the interim. She was gone on July 3rd in the evening. So on July 5th, she was not present there. She had already been gone for over a day. That's, that's the, those are the, that's the evidence that we have today. That's what she just testified to. I'm finding that he violated the conditions of his release. I am setting the bail. I will. Leave that bail at $50,000. On the assault and harassment charge. You're going from 3000 to $50,000 based on him returning to the place that she was not residing. That's, that's, that's an unfair jump in bail, Your Honor, from 3000 to $50,000 is not a fair amount of bail for my, for my client. Your Honor, city's position is that we would ask that the court um, have the defendant remanded from the courtroom on, uh, on the court setting of bail. Again, we would ask for nominal bail on the additional order violation so that he can accrue credit for time served on that matter as well. 
And I would ask your honor, if your, if your honor is going to find a violation and increase bail, increase it to a reasonable amount from 3,000 to 50,000 based on the evidence here today that is not a fair jump in bail. I would ask your honor to impose five, impose 10. He is not going to be able to post $50,000. I set an amount, but for that he could that he could make so he could get out to ensure his appearance and to ensure victim safety and he immediately went back to that residence and I will explain why um, I will set I have jobs lined up. I have work this week and next week. I have things. I will set it. I will too. put that bail at And I, I'm not going to go below that. I am seriously concerned for this victim's safety. I'm concerned you went back. If she wasn't concerned, she would not have filed another incident report. We are back in court because you violated the no contact order. And you've made admissions today that it, I understand that you went back, that you knew you weren't to go back and you weren't planning to stay there. So I will set it at $25,000. The no contact order and the previously imposed conditions are set on the violation. I will set bail at $1,000. Again, conditions will be the no contact order, no criminal law violations, no firearms. I will remand you today. And just, I will call you Ms. Newsom when this hearing, well, I've got 11 a.m. I just wanted to let Ms. Newsom know I'll call her after that to discuss what we're gonna do. New church. Or sorry, new church, I'm sorry, new church. On the new matter, expiration is 925. We'll set this on the September jury term. Is that, is that for both matters, Your Honor? Uh, yeah, we'll keep them together, counsel. So September 6th for readiness at 2 p.m. September 13th for trial, 9 a.m. Ron, what time was readiness again? Two, and it's uh, via Zoom. Thank you. If, it, if he is in custody at that time, we'll do it in the morning at 9.45. Let's see. So expiration will be on the first case. That should still remain on the 90 day trial track, Your Honor, being remanded uh, for violation of conditions released does not shorten the time for trial under the court rules. So his arraignment date on the underlying matter was on 94. Yeah. I'd ask to keep these together, Your Honor, still though. Certainly. Yeah, we'll keep oh, them absolutely, together. Absolutely, counsel. Yeah. 
Mr. Burke, would you like uh, intervening pretrial? Sure. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, what day are those on Monday? Uh, yes, or a Wednesday if we can accommodate you on a Monday. And we can do a quick turn. Thank you. I'm just looking at my calendar here. Probably next week's a little early. If we could do um, the 14th, please. Yes. So August 14th at 9 a.m. All right, so I will uh, allow Mr. Burke and Ms. McDonald um, for potential for Mr. Um, Bailey Garrison to be released on electronic home monitoring with GPS and but that will need to be arranged. There'll need to be some consensus on location and how that will that can be effectuated to guarantee victim safety. So your honor, are you are you in loop you mean in, instead of bail we could we Well could bail is being set. So it can be possible for Moon Security to go out there and hook him up with a different device that can monitor him but there needs to be safeguards. And so I want there to be a conversation. Mr. Burke, if you'd like to speak with Ms. McDonald and Ms. Shattuck to make sure that this can occur. I, I'm confused. So you're ordering electronic home monitoring in addition to bail? In, a, in lieu of oh, bail. Oh, in lieu of bail. Okay, I thought you said no to that. Okay, in lieu, no. in with lieu big, of with bail. So motive. bail is set today. If this is to be hooked up, it will be hooked up at the jail facility but I need some additional information. Understood, Your Honor. I, I, I'm familiar with that. I mean, it would be with victim notification, essentially. Is that um, what Your Honor Yes, and it, it's just going to take some time to make sure that there would be alerts and that we have proper addresses and that there's a safeguard in place. And that's Ms. Moon are you Are you clear on what I'm saying with the different GPS monitoring? Well, I, I think... So GPS is, is fine. Um, there there could be multiple addresses, and I'll leave it to Ms. Shattuck to reach out to Ms. Rodriguez to find out those multiple addresses where she might be, if that's daycare, you know, work, uh, where she's going to be residing, where she might frequent. That that's fine. But certainly, I think if the defendant is going to be remanded from the courtroom um, today into custody. Uh, that might take some time to get that information and That's get it. That's why I'm not doing it here in the courtroom. I'm going, this may take a bit of time. He okay. can either post, but I'm not going to do this release without there being a plan okay. and good detailed information that we could provide. All right. So it's a post, post the bail or, and, and then be released. So even if he posts a bail, he still has to be on electronic home monitoring with GPS. Is that my understanding? 
if he posts the, I mean, there may be, we'll have to see what the situation is. It could be that the court finds that just having a monitor for location may right. be important. He wouldn't be on house arrest. So he wouldn't be on house arrest. If he posts bail, he's not on house arrest. He's on GPS monitoring. GPS monitoring. Right. Okay. That's that's just kind of the clarification. So he's not. Also, that would be in lieu in lieu of bail. So it's either he posts bail or he or he does the GPS monitoring. Correct. No, he would be on EHM with GPS monitoring. Even if he posts bail. To, no, if he posts bail, it'd just be GPS to make sure that we can give that victim assurance as to his location. Okay. Okay. There's a different aspect. I don't know if you're. Yes. Familiar with Mr. Burke, but yeah, I, it would yeah, be I, for I safety. Sure it would this. just be for safety reasons. Yeah. All right. So and that's, if, and that's something I can work with Ms. McDonald and Ms. Yes, Shattuck. Ms. Shattuck. And if there's if they are satisfied that the device can be monitored and that there are adequate safeguards for the location. And it can it can be very detailed. They can put in a number of different locations. Okay. Thank All right. You. Sounds good. Thank Court's you. Court's goal is to have victim safety in light of this violation, and so we have bail, or we have some other options. But I want it to be set up in a very detailed manner and to do it properly. So I'm trying to give Mr. Bailey Garrison some accommodation, but not at her at Miss Rodriguez's expense. And you can present um, something to the court by agreed order as well, if you're able to work this out. We'll do that, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Is the court setting any nominal bail on the other matter as well so he gets credit? I did $1,000. 1000 okay. Your Honor, may I be excused? I have a, an 11 a.m. hearing that I have to run over, or a Department of Licensing hearing, or do you need anything else from me today? Uh, you are fine, Mr. Burke, to go. Thank you. Thanks, Your Honor. Yeah. <laughs> 